Hello everyone. Today I'm gonna be reading The Ugly Prince A Tale from The Me Monsters by Jamie Rex. Here we go. Once upon a time in the land of Illwindia, there lived a butt ugly prince called Spencer. He had a face like it had been put together in a kindergarten art class. His nose came in a fair imitation of a squashed yogurt pot. His eyeballs bulged from their sockets like two empty eggshells. His ears looked like they had been hacked from a sponge. One was small with the or the other was as huge as a dinner plate. His chin was a breeding ground for warts. His top lip was spotty and his forehead jotted out from underneath his hair like like Uluru. He hadn't always been ugly. When he was born, he was as beautiful as any newborn baby, but it was soon evident that he had less than beautiful sign to his nature. He threw his first rattle out of the pram when he was given his first rattle, and threw his first tangent when the nurse picked him his first rattle up and gave it back. He wanted everything my own way, his own way. And when he didn't get it, his little face flushed le- red like a small electric fireplace. At six weeks old, he had his parents, King Rolf and Queen Betty, twisted round his little finger. When he cried, they rushed forward with expected of offerings to soothe his rival foes. hand knitted socks, strawberries and ice cream, talking teddy bears, monogrammed dummies. Old nannies, teddy bears, nannies, young nannies, a bouncy castle, cashmere baby gloss, and a three gigabyte phone. But nothing ever calmed him down. Once he got what he'd been screaming for, he just broke it and wanted something else. He was a willful child. He thought that he was the center of the universe, that every object on earth, Every animal, vegetable, and mineral, every person, and every toy, every invented was his own by right. What nobody ever told had told him was that the center of the universe is a big black hole. Dignitaries from across the world were invited Did to... Prince Spencer's christening, including the queen, king and queen of neighboring Nidabello Fairgloveland, and their baby daughter Brittany. The royal household had perfectly agreed that when Prince Spencer and Princess Brittany were old enough, they should be married. Thus, uniting the peoples of their two small countries and wealth and prosperity. As it happened, Spencer and Brittany were rather well matched. As royal children, they both lived in palaces, they both ate off silver plates and drank from silver tippy uppy cups. And when it, and when they didn't get what they wanted, they both screamed until a nanny lost her head. After the ceremony, Spencer and Brittany's pams were parked next to each other in the throne room. So that and they can get to know each other, Queen Betty claimed coyly to her guests. But when Spencer received 614 presents, and Brittany and on the screen, on this one occasion, she did not what, what she wanted, which is everything that Spencer had. Instead, because he was the christening boy, Spencer got his wish. Which was to have Brittany locked in a dungeon where he could, she couldn't steal his gifts. Nor that Spencer wanted them, as each gift was presented to have a pound swiftly emerge. He tore the wrapping paper, glanced at what was inside, clicked, screamed loudly, hurled the gift away, then held out of his arms for the new next present, tore up the wrapping paper, glanced at what was inside, screamed loudly, hurled the gift away. And... So it went on and 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 on until Spencer's very government. Two hundred, a two hundred-year-old white witch known as 
La 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 la. She did a better over singing, singing all the time. Step forward with her present. This gift is special, she said, fluttering her wings with excitement. Guard it with your life. For the first time that afternoon, Spencer stopped screaming and looked at the parcel on his lap. Ah, the power of providence. Already, it flows through you, she smiled, stroking the baby's brow, which for once was not scrunched in a frown. For five hundred years, Swan Spencer, this gift has been passed down from generation to generation. It is known as the Chalice of Condor. For he that knows it shall always know the truth, and to know that truth is to know which path to take in life. Let it guide you, mind gone son. Listen to his advice when you are faced with a difficult decision. And one day, and this chalice will make you the most powerful and prosperous man in the world. Her speech re received warm applause from King Rolf and Queen Betty, who realized what a generous gift she had just given to their son. Whispering his success, but since the father was boring and hurled the chalice out of his pram, Whereupon it hit a stone unicorn and smashed it into a thousand pieces. The horrified audience fell silent as the large ruby at the center of the chalice's design clattered to the floor and split in two. The only noise in the was in the throne room came from, came from Prince Spencer. So, as he screamed for his next present. La 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 la. Lean in the royal cup, cut, and ex exhaled a long fill of stale air. What have you done? She hissed. That chalice was priceless. Spencer grabbed onto one of her wings, lev levered himself out of his collar until his face was touching hers. Then deliberately increased the volume of his screen to show to her that he didn't care. Don't cap, don't cap, don't cap. Say sorry, she cried. Say sorry, Spencer, and I will forgive you. But in answer to her plea, she tugged down sharply on her wing. His fairy governor gasped as the bone snapped. Then I curse thee, she howled. From now on until the day you say sorry, from every act of selfishness you inflict on others, for every dungeon you throw, for every toy that you break, you will become uglier. And with that, she was gone. Visiting for a time portal to find herself a fairy god doctor and set her wing in plaster cast. And that is why Prince Spencer was but ugly. As he grew older, his selfishness did not abate. A very toy that shattered on the nursery floor, with every kick he planted on his nurse's bottom, on his nanny's bottom, with every scream unleashed in the king and queen's faces, he became just a little bit ugly. Award for smashing the ambassador's platinum paperweight, a bent nose for stamping his feet and the wet weather, a scar for rubbing his caviar into the Duchess's hair, a spot for slashing Van Gogh's sunflowers. And a lump of for kicking a lady in waiting's laptop over the roof of the indoor swimming pool. Thirteen years of the la 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 had placed a curse on Prince Spencer's head. His monstrous features were just about cooked. He was so ugly that he had to wear a paper bag in public so that as not to find babies or turn water fountains to stone. At home, the royal dogs refused to wear their toes in front of him, and at school, he was banned from the few. Oh, team, unless he played in go. The opposition forwards only had to take one look at his face and they run, would run away and hide. Yet for all of, all of this, Prince Spencer remained cheerful because he knew that when he was old enough, he would marry the most beautiful girl in the world, Princess Brittany, or so he thought.
I'll read the rest soon. Like, sub, click bell. Bye-bye.